Hello, everyone. Fire away. John, you can see you. You've got big decisions to make all over between now and Tuesday. What do you see if there's, if there's one position that you think has been the most competitive and toughest to make these calls in? Um, I think it's been a great camp, Greg. It's it's been competitive at every position. I think I think we're we're really happy with our roster and that kind of um, the depth we've kind of established around here has been really good for all the, the spots to compete. I mean, I don't think it's any secret if you guys watch our games, we have a lot of receivers that can play, so probably have some tough decisions there. But um, I think at all the positions, we're going to have some tough decisions, and you know, we'll look forward to next Tuesday when we have to do that. But the guys have a chance to one more. Uh, one more chance to build on their resume, so looking forward to Saturday night too. Yeah, I think from a, I mean, listen, it's our job in the scouting department to build as deep of a roster as we can, and we intentionally used the third round pick on Robert because, you know, we didn't know the outcome of Jensen's free agency last year was coming down. And obviously with Allie retiring and Kappa leaving, um, we made an intentional decision to, to pick Luke. Um, we had Stinney, who's played a lot of good football here. We lost him. Um, we like Brandon Walton. Nick Leverett's done a great job. So, listen, I mean, anytime you start losing a lot of players at a position like we did in corner last year, it gets tough. because There's only so many guys that can do it at a high level. But, you know, we're happy with the progress of the guys in there. They're competing. Um, their tails off, and you know we'll see how it shakes out. Does building the roster change a little bit with the uh, six best investments on the practice squad? In the, in the practice squad going up to 16 players. How does that affect the way you guys build this final roster? Or like? I, I love it. You know, I mean, there's more guys that, if you get injuries at positions or you have needs, you know they can go play. Um, they've done it. They've showed it to you in the past. You know, it was eight, I think, when we started, and it was guys that had two years of experience and. You know, you were kind of holding your breath that they had to go in the game. So, I mean, there's a lot of young guys that can help us. I mean, we may rely on rookies again this year. So just because they're young doesn't mean they can't help us. But, you know, I think it's great to keep some of those players around and keep them, you know, in the, you know, in the, um, in the league and have a chance to play. So, I mean, certainly those six spots we can use and we'll, we'll figure out the best 16 on the practice squad too. We have a lot of rookies that drafted on the offensive side of the ball that could make an impact Year, whether it's Luke on the offensive line, Tate at tight end, Rashad obviously, and the running back. What have you seen from those guys so far here in training camp and preseason? I've seen a bunch of guys that, that just compete, which is one of the things that we stress around here. I mean, we, we understand that they're rookies and, you know, they're going to learn, they're going to make mistakes. But, you know, I think from a teaching, coaching standpoint, we have a great staff that way that, hey, you know, it's good to go into games and make mistakes, right? Like we saw Luke make a couple mistakes the other night, a couple holding calls. Like he doesn't have to do that. but. In that there's a lesson, you know, and as long as you you have the right person that will listen, will understand, can learn from it, and also can bounce back from it, um, you know, I think those 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 mistakes are, end up becoming really valuable for them. And I think we've seen that with all of our guys: the fact that they're going to make mistakes, they're going to compete, and they're just going to keep doing it day after day. And they're 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 starting to stack days, and it's been it's been really good to see. And I mean, really, it's what we expected. So you can take a lot of pride in the, in the depth of your college scouting finding guys late and even after the draft. We talked to some about the receivers and, and some undrafted guys at other position. How, how nice has that group been so far? They've been great. You know, our scouts do a great job. And, I, you know, we, we write so many reports every year and you, you realize, you know, you're only going to get seven draft picks. Um, and we have, a, we have a, you know, a system in place that we we'd kind of draft off of, but that goes all the way to the undrafted guys too. And so, you know, and a lot of times when the, the draft's wrapping up, our scouts are really starting to to ramp it up. And so we end up with guys at some of, you know, these positions that I don't want to name them all, so the whole world doesn't know, but they, you know, they've got our attention. And I'm not surprised because I think we've shown an ability to do that. And, you know, it's a testament to the the scouting process that Jason's established around here and our guys' ability to carry it out. How many phone calls are you building this week about players that position we have depth like receivers? I think it's pretty standard, Rick. I mean, I, you know, it's this time of year, everyone's in touch. Where are you deep? Where would you possibly look to move somebody? Do you need anybody? You know, and, you know, some, sometimes I deal with it, Jason, Rob. I mean, we all kind of deal with it. And, you know, the reality for us, I think, with where we're at and how we've built this team is it, it's going to be hard for somebody to come in 
and make our team right now that hasn't been here. I mean, I think we have a lot of depth and a lot of really good spots, and it's been tested. And you know, we're never going to stop looking to add somebody that can help us. But you know, for we have to be realistic too. I mean, we've got to get ready here in almost what 16, 17 days, and we've got a lot of good players. And you know, we'll always look to add somebody if it's out there. But we're not desperate by any means, and we'll just see. Veteran spots on the practice squad. Is there a possibility where uh, one of the veterans on the team that many assume will make the roster could kind of slide into that spot uh, because you have that ability to elevate them at any time? Is that something you're looking into? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I think that's one of the new great rules they've done is not only can you have the vets there, but then you can elevate them on a week week to week basis without having to actually activate them, you know, sign them, cut somebody, so on and so forth. So, again, we're just going to try to get the best 53 that. Uh, we can and the best 16 that we can after that all with the understanding that um, injuries happen and we want any of those guys on the 16 to, to be ready to go in a game and be prepared and be able to you know uphold the standards that we have around here. Obviously you invest a lot of time and resource to the development of these players but on a personal level when you've gotten to know them as well as you have and you have to be part of the decision that they may not fit into yep. this program how tough is that on you? I mean, other than injuries, when you see guys get hurt and lose the opportunity because of an injury, it's 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 well, the worst day of the job, really. I mean, there's an excitement certainly that now we've got our team, we've got our 53, we've got our 16. But you know, I have so much respect for the guys that come out here and compete and put it on the line and then sweat and you know struggle through the the game of football. It's a really hard game. You know, it's going to test you in a lot of ways and. You know, the reality is we just can't keep everybody. And so I have so much respect for what they do. And, you know, it, just because their journey's over here doesn't mean it's done everywhere. But, you know, there is a, a sadness that goes with that. And for some guys, it is the end. And, you know, I remember when my playing career ended, it was never at this level, but it was a hard day. And you have to come to grips with that. And to, to have a hand in that, you know, it's certainly one of the things that we think about. But we have a job to do here, and, and we're going to do it. We're going to get the best team ready for the Cowboys. Constructing a roster over the course of the year. Is there a part or two that maybe go the most, that goes the most unappreciated or underappreciated from your perspective? Yeah, I think I've talked about it before, maybe with some of you, but I, I think just the daily churn of the roster during the season, you know, you have a lot of time to prepare for the draft and free agency and develop a plan and develop plans, you know, A, B, and C and so forth. But, you know, when you are there on a Sunday night and or a Thursday night, like Invita goes down, like, what are we going to do here? And, your ability to pivot and come up with a plan, whether it's a trade, a guy to sign, to know who's out there, I think can save seasons. Um, and so if you use Vita again, like we, we were ready to sign or trade for Steve McClendon. We were able to make that happen and, you know, miss as few beats as we can. And to me, that's a testament to our, our, our pro scouts, Rob McCartney, Alex Smith, and Shane Scannell. Those lists are ready to go at every position they're well thought out um, and the right guys at the top and there's a plan in place and, and we just follow it. It's just kind of seamless. So I think that is something that is underappreciated. I mean, it's just, you know, there's going to be injuries. You can't predict when or where, but you better have a plan for how to fix it and fix it fast because the game is coming really fast next week. There's a guy like Carl Nassif. Is that someone that you've had that you stayed in contact with or with his agency, his reps saying, hey, you know, we might bring you in or was it Cam Gill went down? I, I mean, look, Carl left nothing but a good impression when he was here. You know, we were we were sad to lose Carl when we did. And, you know, I, I think it's just as simple as we Cam was having a great camp and I feel for Cam. I mean, he did a lot of good things that first game and a lot of good things in practices and I think was ready to have a good year. But kind of just what we talked about. I mean, all right, who's the next best guy? You know, Carl still played at a solid level last year. He knows the system. The defensive coaches like him. The guys like him. So it was a it was a pretty easy decision from that standpoint. Okay, anything else? All right, thank you. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great day.